Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter at St. Paul Lutheran Church, East Lansing, and uh, glad you could join us today. Here we are, still in the Easter season. In spite of all we've heard and all we've seen, it's often hard to believe. Because it is hard to believe, we invest ourselves in the Easter ministry, or mystery rather, for 50 days, a week of weeks. Because it's hard to believe, John the Evangelist will provide sign after sign celebrating Jesus' victory over death. Because it's hard to believe, the risen Christ will return to us again and again in the mystery of Holy Communion, inviting us to touch and taste his presence and offer us in his peace. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, may perfectly love you and wordly magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we've done and by what we've left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so we delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins, and to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now for the gathering song. We walk by faith and not by sight with gracious words drawn near. O Christ who spoke as none who spoke by peace be your hands inside, nor follow where you trod, but in your promise we rejoice, and cry, my Lord and God. Help then, O Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound, to call on you when you are near. And seek where you are found. For you, O resurrected Lord, are found in me divine. Beneath the water and the word, beneath the bread and wine. And when our life of faith is done, in realms of clearer light, we may behold you as you are, with full and endless sight. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of life, you reach out to us and bid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now God speaks to us in scripture, preaching, and song. The first reading is from Acts chapter 5. Peter has been arrested for proclaiming the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. His response to the charges of the high priest summarizes the early church's proclamation of forgiveness of sin through repentance. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, 
We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he must give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to us, to those who obey him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's share one, Psalm 118 responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, my strength, and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punishes me sorely but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, O oh Lord, save us. We pray to you, Lord, prosper our days. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us life. From our procession with branches up to the corners of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's, God's mercy endures forever. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 1. The book of Revelation recounts a mystical vision of the risen Christ experienced by a Christian prophet named John. Here he describes Christ as a timeless Redeemer, the beginning, present, and end of all time. John, at the, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Alleluia. Today's Holy Gospel is the book of St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The unprecedented events of the day of resurrection continue as the risen Jesus appears to his fearful disciples. A week later, after Thomas worshiped Jesus, Jesus pronounces the blessings of the resurrection are also for those who have not seen and yet believe. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas was called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Then Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, here it is, the evening of the day. In John's time, the, uh, the first day of the week would be Sunday. And what's important is people were meeting on Sunday, that first day of the week, on a regular basis, and principally in homes. But in this instance, here they had the disciples, the apostles, all huddled in fear. For fear of the Jews. Now, fear of the Jews is not the Jewish people, but rather these religious leaders. But they live in great fear. Now, just before this text, it talked about how Mary Magdalene was able to see Jesus, where he came to Mary and she did not, not recognize him. She thought he was the gardener, which tells you something about his physical appearance at this point. And she did not know who he was until he spoke and said, Mary. And then she said, ah, you are the risen Lord. And then she went to tell these apostles. And here, Jesus now is going to the apostles to talk to them. Maybe these doors are locked because they weren't totally, they didn't totally buy into what Mary was telling them or they didn't agree to it. And so they were, were afraid, but regardless, here they are all together, and Jesus came and stood among them. Now, the fact he couldn't, came and stood among them, in Genesis, it talks about the tree of life. In Revelation, it talks about the tree of life. And in this case, when Jesus stood among them, we can think of Jesus as the tree of life. He is the tree of life. This is how people are saved. They come to the Father through him. So he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. And actually everything in between. And what does he say to them? Peace be with you. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then they rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. So it wasn't that till that point that they actually saw the wounds that they said, ah, this is their Lord. Now, earlier in John, it talked about Jesus was telling people how you're going to be sad and you're going to weep. But there will become a day when that will turn to great joy. What he was doing, he was fulfilling that says, yes, this is the time of great joy. There was sadness and mourning and weeping, and now, though, that the Lord is with them, now they rejoice and they're glad. So Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. But if not, not so. Now, this is important because when they received the Holy Spirit, okay, he, he was passing on to them through sharing the peace. He was passing to them through his breath. He's passing on the Holy Spirit. And the, it was the peace of God, the peace of God that exceeds all human understanding. So here, a week later, comes Thomas and one of the twelve, and Thomas or Didymus, the twin, since he wasn't with them, he said, even though they said, we've seen the Lord, unless they see the marks in his hand and the wound in his side and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were given the house. But Thomas said, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. So Thomas gets this rap as being doubting Thomas. But really, if you think about it, Thomas represents all of us, our doubts, our questioning things. Now, the Greek verb, the Greek verb when it talks about belief is really about trust. And what Thomas is saying, unless I see this, I will not trust. And a week later, when he was with the disciples again in the house, again, it's reenacted. The doors are shut. Jesus stood as a tree of life among them and said, peace be with you. And so now with Thomas, he's also passing on the Holy Spirit to Thomas. So he's saying, put your hand here and and see my hands, and reach out your hand, put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Do not doubt, but trust. At this point, Thomas says, one of the most concise, accurate statements, my Lord and my God. But then Jesus said, are you seeing this because you believe me? Because those who have not seen and yet believe are blessed. See, the thing is, this is really not about doubting Thomas. What this is about is God's unlimited grace. Because Thomas was questioning that Jesus was among them. But really what this was all about was the unlimited grace of God, where Jesus was saying, okay, Thomas, this is what you need to believe or to trust. Here you are. Put your finger here, put your hand here. He had him go through. He met each of his requirements to believe. In other words, he brought Thomas to faith. And that's important. That's the important part of this message is God's unlimited grace and how, how he was brought to faith. The same way we bring others to faith. That we demonstrate to others many, many different ways. So they too will have faith. So here it ends. The passage ends and said he did many other signs for people to believe. You see, for John it was important. John one one said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And John wants us to know Jesus is the Son of God. He wants us to trust that Jesus is the Son of God, to believe. And that's really what it's all about, that just to believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. But the most important thing, when you believe these things, you may have life in his name. Now, the important thing, this, this issue of when 
Jesus was sharing the peace. We, are, we, we do this, reenact this every week in, uh, in worship. Unfortunately, with, the, uh, with COVID, we, we do waving and there's not touching of hands. And, and some people aren't, haven't been comfortable with that touching, but that touching is, is very, very important. And the reason it is important, it shows that we can touch Jesus. What we're doing is when we share peace with our neighbor, is we're passing on the Holy Spirit. And we do that through touch. Again, we're able to touch Jesus when we have the communion bread put in our hand. So you can say at that point, peace be with you. So this is very, very important that we are to share the Holy Spirit with others. And as you can see from, from Peter, when you re read Peter in, in Acts and what he was like versus how he was before, Peter was all in. He, the Holy Spirit opened, opened things up for, for uh, Peter so he could stand in front of people and say, I don't answer to you, I answer to my God. And that's important for us to remember that indeed that's who we answer to. We answer to our God. And that's what's important. Well, we're going to continue the Easter journey. And I hope you're able to look at these other, uh, other times that Jesus comes to us to, so that we may believe or we may trust. And in him, through him, and by him. But most of all, I say to you, peace with you. Amen. Now for the hymn of the day. Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one being with the Father. 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and then seeth the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now for the prayers of the church. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and of all creation. Holy One who acts righteously, Equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility, humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect your people wherever we are. Watch over those serving in our armed forces and assure them of your never failing strength. We pray especially for Beth and Ryan, Jacob, Jonathan, Noah, Irene, Alex, and Cohen. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Uphold your children who cry out to you wherever people are overcome by the fear of death. Breathe, it, breathe into them your life and peace. We pray especially for those whom we silently lift before you now. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise. With joyful motion and sound, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep to ourselves. We pray for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth, our Synod Bishop Craig and Pastor Carl. Guide them and their staffs as they live out their callings to serve. As we are called to be one, even as Jesus and the Father are one, be with the leaders and the congregation of First Lutheran in Muskegon. God in your mercy, give us the words of your saints who, like Thomas, boldly confessed your son as Lord and God. With Jesus as leader, empower us to live according to his ways. God in your mercy. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Pass on the Holy Spirit to one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gathered in one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Now for singing him, hallelujah, we sing your praises. Hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Christ the Lord to us said, I am wine, I am bread. I am wine, I am bread. Give to all who thirst and hunger. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Now he sends us all out, strong in faith, free of doubt, strong in faith, free of doubt. Now to all the joyful gospel, hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness, hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah.